Hey guys, welcome back to Ostrich Investing, where our goal is to educate and debate specific stock investment ideas. So today we've got another wacky idea for you. We're going to talk about Wayjax. So Wayjax is a small cap industrial that trades on the TSX. It's got a market cap of about 150 million. Who cares? Uh, well, after the COVID-19 sell-off, it's trading at a 15-year low. It pays a dollar per share dividend, which works out to about a 15% yield. And 2019 earnings per share was almost $2. And so the current PE is under four times. So this video is going to take a look at Wayjax and see if it represents an attractive opportunity for investors. Disclosure, uh, Ostrich, or I own Wayjax. Uh, initially bought it in early 2019 at about $16 per share. And so that's what gets the uh, Homer Simpson Doe uh, uh, graphic here. I added some more in March 2020 at uh, $5 and about $5.30. And my blended cost base is $7.80. And this, in my mind, is one of the higher risk positions uh, in my portfolio. Let's jump in. So Wayjax is a diversified heavy equipment dealer with national footprint. Uh, you can see here, we've got over 100 branches across the country. Founded in 1858, so Wayjax has been around for a long time. Close to 3,000 employees, including technicians, sales and support professionals, and then parts and service support. You can see they, they uh, Hitachi uh, or some of the heavy equipment that they, that they sell. You can see in the pictures below. And their end markets are all over the place from construction, forestry, mining, oil sands, transportation, etc. So if we look at the five-year uh, share price for Wayjax, it's been a bumpy road. Uh, you can see going back, uh, sort of traded at highs over the last five years of a little over $25 a share. But it's had some, some periods where it dropped down as low as 15 and then most recently with the COVID sell-off, it's currently trading at $7.10 per share. So if we just pull up some of the bubbles here, you can see in early 2019, that's where I sort of put my initial position on a little bit early. Uh, and then March 2020 is when we've started to have the COVID sell-off. And then all the way down here uh, is myself uh, having a conversation with myself saying, don't average down, don't average down. Uh, but when when Wayjax traded down into the five dollar range, uh, I stubbornly doubled down my position. So we'll see what happens from here. Uh, but at that point, I mean, it was it was trading at under three times earnings, uh, and I, I just couldn't help myself. So right now, the company uh, trades at about four times EBITDA, three point seven times earnings. And uh, one thing to note, and we'll talk about it a little bit later, the company does have leverage. It's got about two point six times net debt to EBITDA, which is higher. Uh, than the company's target for comfort range. Um, and of course, all of these are based on 2019 results, which we know uh, may not be likely to be uh, replicated in 2020. I thought another thing just to point out here uh, is a couple of Wayjax peers. And while the business model is not directly comparable to the other cat dealers, so Finning and Tormont uh, that are here, uh, Wayjax has significantly underperformed its peers over the last year. So you can see uh, Tormont, which is in the light blue, and it's fared the best, just down 8% over the last year. Finning hasn't been great, down 35%. And then you've got the lowly Wayjax down at negative 56%. So they're just interesting to see how it's traded relative to its peers. Here's the financial history. Wayjax does a good job uh, in the annual report, if you go back into the notes, to give an 11 year summary which I think is interesting for uh, what I view as sort of a cyclical light business. So the first thing I'll talk about, just revenue top line. So we've got a $150 million market cap company, excuse me, that does over a billion and a half in revenue. So it's not a small business, but it is very low margin. So you can see here a billion and a half of revenue gets you $40 million of net profit at the end of the day. You can see, uh, earnings per share here going back, you can see that they had negative earnings in 2015, although I believe a lot of that was due to non-cash in impairment charges. And if you go back here, you know, you see earnings of $2, $3, close to four, into the two range. Obviously, 2015 with, with oil and gas was a tough year and, and bouncing back a little bit here. So 
I, that's why I kind of think about it as a cyclical light. There's no question that it's affected by uh, strength in, in the end markets in Canada, namely, you know, resources, commodities, mining, forestry, oil and gas, and construction. Uh, but it's more stable than if you were to look at producers in any of those segments. Uh, and then if you care about the, the book value metric, you know, Wajax trading at $7 per share right now, and the book value is close to 16. Acquisitions, so Wajax has completed a couple of acquisitions in uh, the repair services segment. They bought um, Group de Lome, uh for 52 million, and that was back it, towards the end of 2018. Uh, so one thing to note about the 2019 results and the earnings per share is that should have had a bit of a tailwind from this acquisition. So you've got it, um, it you know, uh, the results, all things being considered, uh, aren't great, especially considering they had the benefit of, of DeLome's earnings uh, for 2019. And then most recently in January, acquired another similar business. This one out west, uh, uh, North Point Technical, a little bit of a smaller deal for $18 million. Okay, so onto the balance sheet. Uh, Wajax has a senior secured credit facility. Uh, which they've extended through to October 2024. So there's not a near-term maturity that we need to worry about. They have an interest coverage covenant of three to one, which is required. Um, and in the note, they talk about limitations on cash dividends. Presumably, if if Wajax was offside of this covenant, that might limit their ability to pay dividends. Um, as at the end of, of uh, 2019, they were onside their covenant. Uh, but I think important to note. Uh, also, They've got a $57 million senior unsecured debenture that was recently issued, and it's due out in January 2025. And debts increased over the last couple years, um, given the acquisitions they've made, but also the increase in working capital needs, which we'll, we'll talk about, I think, on, on the next slide. And the takeaway here is um, Wajax debt to EBITDA of 2.6 times is at the high end of its desired uh, range. So, you know, debt, we'd like to see debt come down a little bit lower here. Free cash flow. Okay, here we go. Um, the big takeaway here is despite Wajax being profitable uh, and add backs of non-cash items like depreciation, free cash flow has actually been negative over the last few years. And that's really been driven by these two key items here, investments into working capital as well as rental equipment investments. And so you can see the total here, almost 80 million uh, in 2018 and almost 90 million in 2019 um, that the company has been investing into its working capital and rental equipment additions. Uh, I think that's an important, an important point. So conclusion, and this is a, another quick video, we're keeping them short, is Wajax a high growth, high margin capital light compounder? Uh, no, it is not. Uh, that said, the business has a long history. It's got a billion and a half in revenue, diversified end markets, uh, and it's profitable. In my mind, the key question, the reason why we just talked about it on the slide before is, will the investment in working capital and rental fleet slow? And can and if it does, Wajax should be able to unlock some meaningful free cash flow that it can use to bring leverage down. And so while Wajax, in my view, is a higher risk investment, it does trade at 3.7 times earnings and offers a 15% dividend yield. And so quickly, you know, bull case, you know, put your rose colored glasses on with a recovery in the commodity end markets. You know, this is a stock that could provide a 3x return from here. Uh, bear case on the opposite end. These are crazy uncertain times. Wajax has debt on the balance sheet. And if there's continued weakness uh, in operating results, it could result uh, in leverage concerns, a dividend cut or suspension. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, uh, interested in your thoughts on Wajax. It's a smaller cap, lesser known name. What do you think? Is it interesting down here or uh, too early to be, to be jumping in uh, to some of these names? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. We'll be back soon with more content. Uh, but until then, happy investing and don't bury your head in the sand.